ladies and gentlemen and my dear students i deem it a honor and privilege to speak at the 75th constitution day celebration being held at acharya naga university i thank the vice chancellor and chief patron professor g ganadhar garu rector professor k k ratnashila mani garu registered g simha chalam garu and hod law department professor l j c and dr kaviti sinwasra garu a distinguished international lawyer and who would be giving the lecture on artificial intelligence and its implications of law i hope you will be seriously awaiting to hear that it's a very niche uh, subject and which you should all be having a, a awareness and you will be working on in the future so today is a very important and significant day today is a day on which our constitution of india was adopted by the constituent assembly exactly 75 years ago india is a great and diverse country with over 1.4 billion people with over 2000 ethnic groups 22 official languages and countless dialects it truly offers a great diversity and no country can match our diversity that's our strength and <clears throat> i remember when i was a uh, a child of about 10 years we were uh, my my parents were uh, uh, stationed at nagarkoil a town near kanyakumari and we used to board a train which starts from jammu and travels all the way to through 12 states before reaching nagarkoil so that was the uh, one example of the north and south a great diversity and it, it a train links the entire country so this was uh, one of our uh, one of my uh, very fond memories of the diversity in india and of course Uh, i have lived in almost all parts of india including northeast and i have experienced the beautiful hospitality and the beautiful culture and i still have cherished memories of my life and still i maintain a very close friendship with them the constitution drafted by the legal luminaries the drafting committee headed by dr b r ambedkar was designed to rec recognize and celebrate our diversity while ensuring equality liberty social justice and fraternity its very structure embodies a spirit of inclusivity federalism ensures that the powers are distributed with the union and states accommodating regional identities and their rights fundamental rights safeguard individual freedom irrespective of caste creed gender or religion direct to principles of state policy guide governance to promote social justice and economic equality bridging gaps that divide us and it embodies the true spirit in article 1 of declaration of human rights adopted by the united nations all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights they are endowed with reason and conscience and shall not shall act towards with the spirit of brotherhood liberty equality fraternity they are the guiding principles of our constitution which are ad adopted from the french constitution and well and dr b r ambedkar explains with very lucidity in his uh, famous speech on the constituent assembly on 25th of november 1949 1949 exactly this day without equality liberty would produce the supremacy over the few over many equality without liberty would kill individual initiative without fraternity liberty and equality could not become natural course of things dr ambedkar wanted to present a socialist constitution which would restrain economic disparities and enable citizens to enjoy the fruits of democracy dr ambedkar embodied these very principles in his direct to principles of state policy now the challenge for the future of democracy in india we are a very young nation uh, 79 77 years of independence and 75 years of adoption of constitution and we have made many great strides India is the chair of G20 under the leadership of dynamic prime minister Narendra Modi India hosted the G20 summit at Delhi and India is now we are in the comity of nations India has established its place among the comity of nations it is a leading voice but we are facing the challenge of extreme economic inequality authoritarianism huge corruption and resurgence of fundamentalism but there are positive trends like growth of democratic space and democratic spirit the resurgence of social movements and against the corruption the better representation of women 
wider opportunities for people's movement in governance and the spread of education among the disadvantaged groups would go a long way in strengthening democracy. We should discover new forms of democratic practice and rethink economic democracy from liberal societies. The state, that is the government, should continue to ensure universal access to basic services and facilities in education, healthcare, and social security. Democratic struggles across the world have brought about revolutionary changes in the social and economic life of the world. We have to strive to complete the unfinished journey of reaching the goal of Dr. Ambedkar in, of linking political democracy with social and economic democracy. Again, I thank you for the opportunity given to me on this special occasion. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. That was a great point. I request Dr.